What's going on YouTube? It is James Ong here and this is another RimWorld guide. Today it is a base design guide. It is the ultimate death trap. The modular base design. If you enjoy this video and find it helpful, please do leave a like, it does really help me out. And of course you can subscribe for even more RimWorld content. Okay, so what is the modular base design? It's basically a build that I've been experimenting with for creating quite a nice looking symmetrical design to a colony that's also highly functional and effective. I recently had the idea of putting the kill box for my base in the center of my structure, something that's actually been working out quite well. The basic idea here was to create an easily repeatable symmetrical design that first off can look kind of cool and interesting, but could also be quite effective and hold up to late game raids. This design has actually turned out to be a lot more potent than I thought it might be, and it also has the potential to look really very, very pretty, which is something that's actually quite important to me when I build a colony. This design also gives you a very structured template for you to work from, so new expansions can come together in a very organized and thought out manner, which again is something that is important to me when I'm building colonies in RimWorld. All right, so how do we start planning and designing our kill box here? Grab our planning tool. We want to create the internal kill box first. So this should be either somewhere between 25 by 25 tiles to 35 by 35 tiles. If you envision your colony being bigger, obviously make it bigger. If you envision your col colony being a little bit smaller, or if you're just a little bit newer to the game, make it a little bit smaller because it's easier. There's less work investment, so it makes things a bit easier for you. All right, let's do our, I'm gonna make this 31. So that's the size I want to experiment with here. So pretty simple, we go and make a 31 by 31 box here. Then I wanna grab my remove plan tool. Actually, no, I still want this. I want to find the center here. 16 down is the center. So I'm gonna find the center on both sides here and just, oops, that was, so there's 16. Mark that, excellent. So I've got the center on both of my sides here. Now I'm going to create the opening for my corridors. Now, um, previously I've done these as being three wide. I'm gonna experiment with five wide here. Basically, if you're gonna do a bigger kill box in the center, try five wide. Um, otherwise, go with three. So I'm gonna remove five out of here and I'm actually gonna drag down and grab that other side as well. This just is a little bit quicker for me to um, line all the sides up sort of thing. And then I go and create my corridors here. Now your corridors should be about as long as your kill box is uh, wide in diameter. So I'm gonna go with 31 on these. Okay, so there's the shape starting to come together. All we need to do now is join up the outside walls here. So like so, and down here. Now I think if I extend on the size I've got, if I extend 43, I think that is exactly the right size and indeed it does look like it is. So if I go 43 out here and then up here, uh, am I correct there? I'm not correct there, okay. So you need to come back one. It probably doesn't really matter, like I could you know, have that be a little bit larger, but then it's not going to be perfectly symmetrical, is it? And I'm sure that would uh, that would annoy me later on. So there you go, that is the basic template that we're gonna start working from here. We've got like four sort of distinct modules here that we can start building rooms in. We've got this center kill box thing here with our corridors here that are gonna be like death traps with, um, yeah, turrets firing down into them. I kind of, this does work really quite well. Let's um, let's turn on the God mode and let's give a bit of an example about how we would go um, starting to build things here. Let's choose some marble walls because they look kind of nice, right? So um, when you're beginning the game, right, what's some common buildings that you might build? Well, to start off, you might build, say, just a random room 
11 by 7, sounds pretty good. Throw a door in there. Um, so this could be just an initial room that you start with. People are going to sleep in here. You may be going to store some stuff in here initially. This is where you could spend your first night. Um, then let's go and build... Let's build some... No, let's build a kitchen now. All right, so we'll put a kitchen in somewhere here. Uh, let's put the kitchen here. So I feel like this is a reasonable size for a kitchen. It's quite a small kitchen, but that could kind of work. Potential, potentially then here we could do a larger sort of thing for a freezer. So that could be the freezer on the back of the kitchen there. Then we could throw some bedrooms in here potentially. So if we do that and then divide this up like so. These could all be bedrooms probably accessed from the back here. I don't tend to like to put too many doors on the internal structure here but a few is okay. Probably one for the kitchen as well. So there's a good little basic start for a colony, right? And you can see the way I'm building here. I'm building along my current plan, and whenever I build things early game, I like to try and do two things at once. So here I'm building a room, but I'm also building the internal wall to the kill box. So I'm building a wall and a room at the same time. Something that's just a general good tip for you to do on any colony design. Um, and at this point, I guess we could then go and look at just walling up the rest of this uh, structure here. So that might be the next thing that you would do. There's probably more rooms that you want. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe a crafting little room or something. There's probably a, a couple of extra rooms, but this is a, a decent sort of look at the... Oh, I've made that a bit too wide. Well, that's okay. Um, a decent sort of look at what you might expect. Have I really made that too wide? Oh, I haven't followed the plan there. So yeah, I've messed up slightly there, which is okay, I suppose. Or... Yeah, I can just... I, I haven't built that bit yet, so we'll be good. We'll be good. Um, right, so what I like to do in the early game is block these corridors off, because it's too much work investment for me to obviously build, like, the external wall all the way out here. So, I start off with this. I block these off, then... On a few of them, I might just throw doors in like this. Let's do it for three of them here. And then maybe say for this one down here, that's a little bit funny looking at the moment, just because of the plan. But yeah, let's do that. And then let's make this a trap area. So if we do something like this, if we go and grab some traps in here, we might as well do steel just to be sort of realistic. Throw some traps down in there. Grab our door again, throw a door in here and a door in there. Perfect. If we held this open, this is now, once that's opened up, a little trap area for enemies to walk through. And this is quite defensible. We're now enclosed in an area. We can block everything off if we want to as well to keep a Manhunter pack out. This works perfectly fine for, um, for an early game sort of setup. And then we're pretty much safe now and we can take our time to build out the rest of our structure here. Once you have started to build out the rest of your structure and get the defensive corridors formed, you want to place rows of traps at the end of each of the four corridors, eventually placing up to six traps in each zone. You can see how I design my small corridors for the traps here, but there's always room for flexibility in how you design these. The width of the defensive corridors will determine how many guns are able to fire down each of them, so the wider you make these corridors, the more potential your kill box has to inflict damage. There's also many things I like about this design. Unlike many bases, you can exit from all four points of the compass, and with the four corridors into the colony, enemy groups will sometimes get split up and each choose different routes to get inside your base. And with the four sets of six traps, you have a lot of potential here to absorb attacks before they even reach your internal kill box. Plus, with the symmetrical design, I find this quite aesthetically pleasing, and I think there's possibilities to tweak things even more here to make things even more symmetrical and sexy looking, which is something that I'll touch on again in just a minute. Once you have the external wall created, 
you can build small corridors that allow fast access from the inside of the base to the external trap areas. These can be used by melee pawns in particular during raids to spring out and attack enemies, or just to stand safely in and pursue attacking pawns once they decide to flee. It will also give you a quicker entrance slash exit route to the far corners of the colony once you've built up the entire structure. Alright, so here's an example of something that you could do with this kind of base design. It's probably something pretty similar to what I'm going to do the next time I try this. So I've just gone with something here like mirroring all the structures in each of the modules and I don't know, it kind of looks pretty damn cool I reckon. Got a few colonists here just throwing some roofs in as well. I put mm, some kind of a kill box in the center. I would definitely flesh this out a bit more if I was actually playing on this, but this is an idea of what you can do. Um, and yeah, you can make these look quite nice as well, the little kill box things. I'll flick the guns on just because. So they are behind a switch here. And all of these turrets, uh, so those don't fire very far apparently. Um, but the auto cannon turrets, they can fire down these corridors here. You guys can fire down these corridors as well. So yeah, you would definitely advance this kill box out a bit more so you get more range down the corridors. But we've got some of the, the big guns in here. Oh wait, yeah, these can, oh, these can fire hella far. Yeah, okay, yeah, I see. So they've got the minimum range there. And then, yeah, that's going to give your bigger guns some protection because they'll have these smaller guns around it. Um, and yeah, anything that comes in here is just going to get blasted. It's going to get blasted. Um, and the defensive trap areas here are very strong as they are. Um, in this setup, I would hold this open here. And yeah, that would mean that pawns would come through, attacking pawns would want to come through this way. So I'd hold all of these doors open. And then, of course, you can seal up. So you can have them not be held open if you get a Manhunter pack come that you don't want to come in. Um, also here I've put in the little secret corridor type things. So... Sad Wanderer, someone sad wandering. Yeah, so you can, um... You can get a melee pawn to, like stand in here during a raid or something, people are attacking, maybe as the last attacker comes through you send him through the door and he stabs him in the back sort of thing, or you know you wait till they flee and then he runs out and chases a colonist who you really want to try and capture, something like that. These are these are quite useful, I think, um, and it's kind of cool as well, you know, it feels like this like secret access into the base sort of thing. Um, and yeah, if I, when I do these I don't put too many doors, like if you had a lot of access, so if you had access like, you know, through here, through here and stuff, then you're going to get pawns using this path a lot, because, you know, if they want to go here, they'll come in through here and through access through the door there. I mean, they would probably still go up this way rather than going through the center and back through here, but, you know, maybe not. If you have less access through this corridor, it's just going to mean they use it a little left, less often, so it will uh, seem a little more, a little more secret. Um, and yeah, I haven't really, like, I haven't fleshed out these rooms at all, but all of these rooms could be different purposes as well. And other things that you could do is, like, these would not necessarily have to be enclosed rooms either. Like, you could have one of these as a no-roof zone, have soil here, and this could be, like, an outdoor, like, green or grow area, you know? Or even it could become an indoor grow area. There's so much stuff that you could, like, you know, this is just a template. This is just a template to work from. And then from there, you know, get creative with it. See what you can do. Um, you could, like, round the corners off as well, you know, to make it look even more sexy. There's lots of cool stuff you could do here. I don't know. It's, I like this. I like it. And then the kill box in the center and stuff. Yeah, I just... I kind of dig this. The next time I play on this, the next time I play on this, I'm going to try and do... I'm going to try and do some symmetrical looking type thing. I think this can look really, really nice. Um, if you do try this out, I'd love to see a screenshot of it. Um, so, yeah, if you do try this out and you get something going that you kind of like the look of, 
love to see a little screenshot. There is a Discord link in the description of the video, so you can come and drop me one over there. Um, yeah, this is the modular base design. I do hope you have some fun with this. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps you'll enjoy my playthrough on the ice sheet, which was my first time experimenting with this base design. And if you'd like to see more RimWorld, you can subscribe. I post videos every single day that I post them.